What up YouTube? It's your boy Reckless here. So today, for like the fifth time, I'm gonna remove my vacuum pump and I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all how to do it. So, I can't really start the truck in this intro, but I am gonna show y'all this video to tell y'all why I'm sending this other one back, ordering a different one. Cause I do have one from Dorman that's available, that's new to install now, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna try this one one more time because I put a new seal kit in it and it's leaking for some reason. The old owners left a nick in there, I think, because it was pretty damaged from the old owners. They have tried to reseal it before. And uh, anyway, I'm sending the doorman back after reading reviews. I made another video, which I'll show you the new pump and that video right here. So anyways, I hope y'all enjoy this video of removing a power steering pump on a 94 to 2002 Dodge Ram. Go ahead and get a video of this and show y'all why I chose to with a different pump here. See that gap right there, guys? I don't know. It's just, I read the reviews, guys, and it's probably best if I send this back. That's all I'm going to say. Dorman, Dorman pump. Anyway, guys, yeah. Off to my video. Okay, guys. If you have not already... You want to try to remove this fender well on your truck because it's going to give you a lot easier access to the pump itself right there. And you can actually see where it's leaking still. So yeah, we're going to get in there and try to get that off. Uh, that right there, that hose you see coming out of the bottom of the pump is a 9 16 It should come off fairly easy if the... Uh, threaded thing above it comes out it is an 11 millimeter hold back up on it move the 9 16s take it off uh, but anyway first what you want to do is disconnect your batteries I, I usually don't I'm I keep I'm fairly good about not touching power wires so I don't do that but anyway first you want to disconnect your batteries uh, remove your VP44 plug-in if you have one remove your apps plug-in auto acceleration pedal position sensor I guess uh, and then also in a different time when you remove the pump itself because right now it's not in the way you can also remove your this wire right here it's um, the one to your balancer to tell your RPMs I keep forgetting but anyway guys what I want to do is take 7 16th deep socket and remove this one right here and as referenced earlier, if you have this removed, you can take and remove it again right here, which I will show you all that in just a second. So stay tuned. Here I'm removing the 7 16 to my air intake manifold so you can get through here to get access to your vacuum pump. And uh, yeah, let me get that done real quick. And we will go to the bottom one and do the same thing. Deep socket is preferred so you don't have no problem getting it on there and getting this removed at all. And it should be good just like that because we're going to slip this down and out. Alright, we're going to go to the bottom one and remove that one as well. And if you removed... Good enough. Yeah. Over here. I got it. This up here? Can you see it? Yeah. And if you remove this fender well in here, the plastic, you can get to this one fairly easy, depending on how it's turned to remove the bottom clamp as well down here. And that is a 7 16 deep socket. And while you have that loosened up, you want to just take this right here, go down with it, and then you bring it right back up and it comes out down there, and that is out of your rear way. And we will proceed to go to our next step, which we're getting a pair of 
preferably channel locks, but pliers will work. And that 18 millimeter wrench we're talking about. And you want it, you want something to catch the wool down there. I have a pan. You waste a lot of fluid here if you got to keep resealing this. You waste a lot of money on fluid. Those are just squeeze clamps. You can use pliers to get those off. But the worst problem is the 18 millimeter down there. And it's it, it's usually a quick knock loose and it spins off with your fingers. But be gentle and try not to make it leak because you can't over torque it. It should just tighten up and that's it. You shouldn't have to give it too much. Get that one off. So first we want to remove these because if we try to remove our mount bolts and remove all this stuff, you're just, you're putting too much strain on things that you shouldn't. So what you want to do here before you get that 18 millimeter is if you have a new, if you're not doing this for a while, these are going to be caked on there. I've done this before, so mine are going to be fairly easy to remove. So removing these hoses for me, you're, you're not going to get them off this easy. And as you see, the fluid will start to drain right there. And what you want to do is just move this hose out of the way somewhere because it just hooks back up, right back over that fitting. And then this right here, and you just pull it off as well. You can set it up here. Let it kind of drain out. Actually, lean it over here to drain first so you don't get it on the ground like I just did. I, I can get it off. To keep air from getting in the system. But either way, then you want to take your 18 millimeter wrench, open in, to get down here. Oh, wait. Okay. It's okay. You want to take your 18 millimeter open in to get down here to this, which be careful, you will knock your knuckles on, knuckles on several different things here. But you want to get it on there like that, and you just want to break it loose, just like that. Boom, it's broken loose. And it's out of there like right. that. Now let's see where that went because I didn't really get a good shot at your hand. The back side of your hand was right where the bolt was. Okay. This hose that I just took off goes right down here below the two that you're gonna be removing. Okay. And it should be right down here. You should be able to reach it with the wrench at an angle right here. Yeah. But it should be right here at the end of my wrench, if you can see that in the video, right there. Yeah. And I do most of my best work by feel, anyway. Yes. And then, what you want to do next is I already have it up here. You want to take this and take your 7 16 off and grab a 10 millimeter. And you want to take your extension off. Let me grab my 10 millimeter. I'm going to take that 10 millimeter, oh, and that's why I unplugged my uh, wiring earlier. You want to stick it on this little nut right here and remove that. If I can get this greasy hand. Okay, I may be a liar. It might not be a 10 millimeter. One second. Mm -hmm. Is it too big? Yeah. Three eggs. I think so. That's what I used it. Yes. Okay, you take a three eighths, guys. Don't let me lie to you like that again. Got one here in a handy dandy toolbox. I know what it is, guys. I think that's why I had the 11 millimeter. Not 11, 18. The last time, they didn't have the paper.
I think that's a. Uh, okay, I'm using the wrong. Okay, guys. I was using a 7 16. It is a 10 millimeter. I was using the. It is 10 millimeter, guys. I was using the wrong. You uh, need a magnet. Change. I was no. using the wrong socket. It is a 10 millimeter. I had the wrong one over here, guys. Don't. Magnets are your. Don't let me do that again. Watch this. Boom. It's loose. Okay. 10 millimeter. There you go. So you can see this is a man's most hard found socket, a 10 millimeter. My daddy taught me there's a the right tool for every job. Don't be using a screwdriver as a pry bar. Nope. But I always left mine out in the rain to watch them rust. <laughs> Check out the different colors of metal, oxidized and corrode. Anyway, when you get that 10 millimeter off, set that on your battery here. Like I said, a lot of people disconnect this stuff, but if you don't hit it, you should be okay. You want to pull your wiring harness off that uh, mount that it's on, and at that time you're able to scoot it out of the way, and you have quite a bit of access <coughs> to your power steering pump there. Like they uh, also recommend putting your hand in here and removing this uh, sensor here. It should be fairly easy to just get in there and pop out. Oh my goodness. That wasn't easy at all. You like what the doctor did at the C sets. <laughs> anyway, and that opens up <coughs> yeah. availability to your 15 millimeter bolt. And you have a 15 millimeter on the bottom. And there is a mount bolt that's 15 millimeter as well. And the way you're going to get to those is the reason I asked you to remove your fender flares earlier because you will have to get a little bit of room right here and use this little bit of space here to remove all that stuff so we're going to try to get you the best video i can of that but it'll be after a short instance of break all right right here guys i got my torque wrench which i need to adjust to a higher setting before i go break and loose the bolt you want this to be at 57 foot pounds which we have 55 there so you want to go up here to where it says 55 and then bring that two to right here that is set at 57 foot pounds and what you want to do is get your deep socket on there if you have to you may have to lay over your engine bay and hold it on there with your hand but if you're pretty good you're, you should be able to break it loose there you go and then what you want to do is go ahead and loosen this up once you have that torque broke loose guys you should be able to take a regular socket wrench, a ratchet wrench that's not so long and break that loose. So what you want to do then is leave that how it is right there. We'll be able to take that off with another wrench. We're going to go ahead and go to the bottom one and try to remove it. First, why don't we pack our lip with a fat dip? You always gotta have a dip while you're doing some mechanic work. No, I didn't say dick because that's people drive Prius. <clears throat> Alright, what you wanna do now that you have the top bolt broke loose to where you can get it with a regular ratchet like this one right here. You want to get your torque wrench up here. And if, like you, like I said, you remove this fender well plastic piece here. With a reasonable size torque wrench, you should be able to reach these bolts that I'm fixing to remove. And you can't really see the one I'm going to remove first, guys. But it's real easy. You could remove it with your hand. It's not but 20 something foot pounds. I think 22. But what you want to do is put a hand right here where my going up. You can hold the back of this wrench onto this bolt closest to the block. And boom, it's already loose like that. And it, uh, the reason you want to take this off is because this is mounting to the block. And you could say that it's much easier to remove the uh, 10 millimeter bolt that's holding the mount from this to the block but i actually find it easier to hold this because once you get all this lined up and that slid into that hole you can let go reposition get your bolts right and everything rather as 
If you do it this way, you gotta hustle one bolt in the top, come down here and try to straighten up your mount. So, anyway, I got that loose. I can take that off of my fingers now. I'm pretty sure it's pretty close to that. Okay. First, before I keep going, let me go get that 9 16th I was talking about earlier and remove this oil fill line here that I should have done in the first place. Okay guys, what you want to do is take your 9 16th right here, boom, I'm going to bust that old feed line off. I should have took it off a little bit earlier, but I was thinking of something else that should just slide right out of your way and it should give you better access to what I'm struggling with just a second ago. But that takes a 9 16th like I said, then you get your torque wrench back and like you think if you don't, the reason most people take half the pump off first is because they don't think they have room really if you take this flare out you can you get right in here and reach all these bolts it's just trying to get dirty and do things like a real mechanic should time is money time is money yes time is money so don't just think you failed and can't get this pump out in one piece because it's doable like i'm showing you all right once i get that hand I can actually there you go guys I can take that out now with my fingers and that is the mounting to the block that's not the one that's torquing to the timing case we're fixing to take that one off as well right here all right we dropped that bolt you always want to clean that stuff up after you drop it it is real dirty we're gonna go ahead and screw that to our bar here it fit just perfect so we'll remember where it's at and then we want to get our torque wrench in right here again and this is for the mounting bolt to the timing cover now guys these are in the same area same height you'll be able to tell what's going on so like I said if you uh, put your wrench up there like that you should be able to bust this loose just like that like I said you don't get much room, but you get plenty. And just like that, it is loose. So now we want to take this ratchet. We'll put it on the reverse side. And it's a lot smaller, so I can just get in here with one hand and take that out a lot better than that torque wrench now. Once you break it loose of torque, you should be able to get a smaller ratchet. If I can get it on the bolt, put my other hand in here. I usually use quarter inch. There you go. This is a lot smaller, yes. Yeah. There they, you go. They have a, a lot better wibble sockets and impact impact sockets once they're busted a loose. But now that I got that bottom one out, I left my top one in kind of tight. That's the only last one I have to get out. And we should be able to remove this puppy with no problem at all. In a matter of minutes, but... You just gotta be good. Yes. Or from Texas. Okay. Now we want to go up top to remove that last bolt up top. Alright, stop that video. Alto. Guys, I got the bottom one out. This is what the bottom one looks like. That's why you can use a shallow socket. Like I said, bust it loose. It's 57 foot-pounds. And then you can just use a regular ratchet to get it loose. And this is the mounting bolt that you want to remove. You'll see it stuck through on a mounting bracket. If you don't remove that, it's just going to be impossible to remove this pump. So once you have all those, all the hoses, I already had this disconnected before I showed y'all. Also this vacuum line, which is already broke for me, that runs off the top right here out of this hose. You want to remove that. But once you have all that stuff out of the way, guys, your, your wiring harness pushed over here out of the way, and uh, all these broke loose from torque, you want to get it clear a little bit here. And you want to go ahead and get this last bolt to where you can get it out with your fingers right here all right since my cousin's holding this up here i'm going to be able to get this bolt out with my fingers here now it's always better to have 
a uh, helper. Or whenever, at least a level head. Or a level head whenever you're... And that's what the other bolt looks like. Yeah, it's got a stud bolt. Yes, that stud for the wiring harness package to stick to. And what you'll want to do now, watch out. You just pull that backwards. And it's going to leak a little bit of fluid, guys. But you'll just come straight up out of here like this. You might catch a couple wires. Hold on, let me go back down in here. Let me go back down in here. I got a hold of something I shouldn't have already. I pushed it out of the way. Okay, guys. Then you'll just pull this up like this. Like I said, you'll leak a little bit of fluid out of there. And that's how you remove a vacuum pump out of a 1994 to 2002 Dodge Ram diesel pickup truck. Hey guys, with the pump out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and show you all that 10 millimeter mounting bolt I was talking about that you have to remove before you can remove your vacuum pump. But there it is. I just wanted to show y'all that. You can remove it from the block. You can do it either way. I just rather remove the other way so it can sit and rest in there while you're putting these other two bolts in. But yeah.